Ascension means the act of rising to an important position or higher level. Dracula 2 Ascension doesn't have an Ascension at all, so right off the bat they're lying to us. But this is a direct-to-DVD sequel of Dracula 2000, so maybe I shouldn't be so picky. It opens up with some chick being chased through the streets at night. Whoever is chasing her has some serious Michael Myers vibes because he just walks slowly and all calm while she's freaking out and running like a crazy person. I think at first we're supposed to think this is Dracula himself, but no. This is Father Ufezi, a priest who knows Kung Fu. I kick ass for the Lord! He's hunting this girl who happens to be a vampire, but she's not alone. She has a twin sister who attacks. Ufizi fights them both and eventually wins. All right, a little vampire beheading, that gets things started. But he was bit in the fight and is now going to turn. Knowing what he'll become, Ufizi decides to step out into the sunlight. But instead of bursting into flames, the evil parts of the curse die out, leaving him a holy man. Now in New Orleans, our where bodies? some teacher is talking about how our bodies are fail. doomed to fail, some which hits home for him because he's in a wheelchair. He also things. talks like Batman the whole time. Failure. It's the most important lesson you will learn in the medical profession. Dog. This is Lowell. His name is spelled Lao, but everyone calls him Lol, like LOL, so I'm just gonna go with that. He has a really familiar face, and it took me a while to figure it out, but he also played the lead in Nightbreed, so that might be where you've seen him before. Nightbreed. Anyway, after class, he meets up with some of his students, Elizabeth, Tanya, and Kenny. Liz is a little more than just friends, though, being with Lol, despite his handicap. She leaves the party early to go to her job at the morgue. We see some flashbacks from the first film, showing Dracula being burned to a crisp, just in case you forgot. Then Liz at work, and Luke wheels in her next body. Guess who it is? Just take a wild guess. It's Dracula. Yep, gone is the whole Mary locked him in a vault and she's the new keeper. In fact, Mary isn't mentioned in this movie at all. Instead, I guess someone just found a burning corpse hanging from a cross and called the cops. Anyway, Elizabeth and Luke start to dissect the body to figure out who it was. It takes them a while, but eventually they get to the teeth, and some retractable fangs come out and poke Liz. So, her fate is set. Luke wastes no time and jumps right to it. He knows that this body laying in front of them right. is a vampire. We found a vampire. We bagged us a vampire. We, 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 we bagged us a vampire. Liz goes and calls Lowell to inform him on this wild discovery, while Luke gets a phone call. Some mysterious stranger knows what just arrived into the morgue, and he offers them $30 million for it. Luke obviously says yes. Forgetting all about the law and morality of this situation, he decides to switch it out with another burn victim, and then no one will be the wiser. Except for Father Ufizi, who pours holy water on the fake corpse. Only for it to do nothing. So Luke and Liz manage to escape with Dracula's body. Their plan is to do their own experiments on it first. Then, once they're done, sell it to the mysterious man for a cool 30 million. They set up a shop in Lowell's parents' old house and start their testing. The first thing they try? Filling a bathtub with blood and submerging the body in it. Well, I'm guessing that'll work. But after a couple of hours, nothing has happened. They go to pull him out and, surprise, Dracula attacks. It's a bloodbath, literally. He manages to kill Tanya instantly before some dude comes in, hits him with a flashlight, and sprays him with holy water. This is Eric, the guy with the money. Oh, and that flashlight he used? He calls his sun gun. 
That's not important. I just thought I'd throw that in there. It's a sun gun. They bury Tanya and transport Dracula to his new location so they can continue experimenting on him, wrapping him in silver chains and more sun guns to keep him weak. They also have silver tipped spear guns just in case things go sideways. This is where we first get to see Dracula in his human form and I don't really know what to think. I wasn't expecting Gerard Butler, although it's a shame they couldn't get him. This new guy isn't bad though. And they explain it away later, saying that with every new regeneration, his appearance changes. Kind of like Doctor Who. They draw some blood from Dracula and start experimenting right away. And, surprise, surprise, it can cure Lowell's degenerative disease. But then, Luke reminds him what holy water would do to him. So, maybe it's not ready yet. Luke is the only one with some brains in this whole operation. We see him go to the church and get some holy water. Don't ask. And he also spreads seeds around the vampire's feet and throws a knotted rope over him. All because he read in a book that vampires are compulsive counters and must count all the seeds. And if they see a knot, they must untie it. Stupid rule, but I mean, it is vampire lore. The whole time, Ufizi is always just two steps behind Dracula. We get a glimpse into his past and we see him talking to Roy Scheider. Yeah, the dude from Jaws. What a weird cameo. Anyway, he tells Ufizi that Dracula was the first, and they must do their part to set his soul free. Even though he's a pretty evil person, he was once a man, and all men deserve forgiveness. We also see Ufizi whipping himself in which he instantly heals, reminding us that he is indeed a vampire. Elizabeth goes to get more blood, but Drac is fresh out. He says it's better to protect what they have instead of getting more, making Liz run to find Kenny injecting himself with the last remaining vial. So now he's a vampire. He gets out and he's loose on the streets. While everyone goes hunting Kenny, Lowell stays back and gets into some sort of trance, wheeling himself over the edge of the pool toward Dracula. Kenny kills a girl and eventually gets stopped by Father Ufizi, who takes him out pretty quickly. It's not even a fight. Do you want my soul, is that it? No, God, get your soul. I just want your head. Ufizi asks Eric, who just happened to be here, where it is, where is it? and he tells him. Eric runs back to the group while Father Ufizi kills the girl. Kenny transforms. Luke and Liz find Lowell in the pool, passed out, but he's still alive. His blood trail almost to Dracula, but Luke cleans it up. Anyway, Drac is still out of blood, and Lowell isn't going to make it without vampire's blood. So Liz transfuses some of her own to him, which causes some crazy hallucinations. Anyway, Luke snaps her out of it, and she's able to inject Lowell with the blood, curing him of his illness. And now he's able to walk. But then he reveals it was all part of his plan. That's right, Lowell is the bad guy. He informs everyone that Eric is his friend, and they're both broke. So yeah. there goes all hope of getting that $30 million. Lowell used to work in a morgue 15 years ago, and a body came in. He knew it was a vampire, but it was taken from him before he could experiment with it. So he went all over the world looking for more. However, he got sick and couldn't walk anymore, forcing him to find helpers. So Elizabeth meant nothing to him except for a way to find a cure. Liz, now pretty upset, splashes holy water on him, and he hobbles away into the light, only to meet with Ufizi. Back with Dracula, Eric must choose between the last vial of blood or escaping. And I guess he just can't resist. He gets the blood, but then Dracula breaks out of his chains and bites off Eric's face. Luke is pretty confident that his traps will work, but they don't really. The vampire unties all the knots and counted the seeds in an instant. However, it stalled him just long enough 
for Fezzi to come in with Lowell's head. Dracula steals his coat, giving him his signature look, then he goes to bite him, only to smell the vampire blood already coursing through his veins. Luke shoots him through the neck, and the father stabs him, forcing Dracula to escape. Eric comes back to life as this weird mouth monster. They kill him pretty quickly, but I just had to mention him. He looks really cool. Ufezi tells Luke to force Liz into the sunlight and hope that there's enough human left in her to keep her alive when the vampire blood burns up. He tells her that it's gonna hurt, he knows from experience. She tries, but the pain is just too much and she opts to just transform instead, finally becoming a vampire. It's time for the final showdown. White against dark, evil against holy, and who will win? Well, Ufezi starts breaking out windows, then he gives Dracula his last rites. He absolves Dracula of all his sins, but the creature doesn't want his blessing. He's so close to ending it, but Dracula offers to tell him the truth about Christ. Being that he's the only one on the planet who's actually met him, it's too tempting of an offer. We get some flashbacks to the first film, and then Liz shoots an arrow into Uffizi, joining Dracula at his side. But the fight's not over yet. I'll find you. I'm counting on it. And that was Dracula 2 Ascension. What'd you think? Definitely not as good as Dracula 2000, but not bad for a straight-to-DVD movie. Gone is any connection to the original novel. There's no modern gothic setting, we don't hear anything about Simon or Mary, and the only thing they brought over from the first movie is Dracula himself, which if he wasn't in this movie, I think I would be pretty mad. The beginning set up the story, the middle was just kind of meh, and the end honestly left me wanting to see more. So I guess that's pretty good. I want to see what happens to Afuzi and Dracula. The best part of these movies is Dracula's history and his connection to God. So I hope that they go more into that in Dracula 3 Legacy, the final movie in the Dracula 2000 series. So stay tuned where we're going to wrap it all up next time. As for Dracula 2 Ascension, I give it 2 Sun Guns out of 4. You are not dealing drugs to Professor William. You're not got Viagra, actually. We'll be fishing on that rod all week long.